This guy was called the next great Michigan quarterback. He was one of the best gunslingers in Michigan high school football history, and he was pegged as the savior of the program. He had dreamed of becoming a Michigan Wolverine, and he obviously had the talent and skill set to be that guy. Unfortunately, he never lived up to the hype. He barely ever played as a Wolverine, and not only did he not finish at Michigan, but he never got a chance to play in the NFL, which is what many people expected him to do. Today's video will be a classic what happened to video, and we're gonna take a look at his rise as a player, his crazy college career, and ultimately what went wrong and why he was a bust. But before I tell you the subject of today's video, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel for this upcoming season, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on all that content. And I would really appreciate it if you both subscribed and hit that like button, as it really helps the channel out. Now, without further ado, let's get started. If you have made it to this point, you're obviously wondering who the subject is, and his name is Shane Morris. But in order to talk about how he became both a five-star recruit and the alleged savior of Michigan football, we need to go all the way back in time and see how all the hype began. So as I previously stated, the state of Michigan has struggled to produce a lot of big-time quarterbacks over the years. Shane Morris changed that, though. He was born in the town of Warren, Michigan, and went to school at De La Salle Collegiate High School, which is an all-boys Catholic school. He was forced to start as a freshman, and instead of being nervous about it all, he was ready for the moment. Apparently, his coach told him all he had to do was hand off the ball and to not do anything else. They were going to put a lot of pressure on him, as they didn't want any crucial errors. The coach didn't have full trust in him, but he would after this day. His first pass went for a touchdown, and the legend of Shane Morris began that night. From there, he would quickly blossom into a big-time blue-chip recruit, and it would show on the trail. Cincinnati made Morris his first scholarship offer in February of his sophomore year, and it apparently brought him to tears. While a ton of other offers began to roll in, he was waiting for one in particular. The offer was Michigan. But at first, he wasn't sold on what Rich Rodriguez was going to do for him, but their new hire would change the game. He said, quote, when Rich Rod came in and changed the offense, I kind of wavered a little bit. I didn't really know if I could play in that type of offense. I wanted to play more of a pro-style offense. But when Coach Hoke got hired and Coach Borges came in as the offensive coordinator, I fell in love with the coaches and with the offense. I always loved the school. It's Michigan. Morris would eventually get that offer, and he wasted no time committing to the Wolverines. He said, quote, Growing up, I was a fan of Michigan football. When I got that offer, it was a huge deal for me. I met Coach Brady Hoke, and they really treat everyone like a family member. Shane Morris was the first commitment in the Wolverines 2013 class, and it was a strong one. He went to the Wolverines over the likes of Alabama, Cincinnati, Michigan State, Syracuse, and Tennessee. He said, quote, I love it here, the whole atmosphere. I love the people there as well. When I walk in now, I know they welcome me as every part of the family. We're going to win a national championship. During his junior year, he passed for over 1,700 yards and nine touchdowns, while leading his team to a nine and three record. By 2012, he had become a five-star recruit, and him and Washington quarterback Max Brown became the two best high school gunslingers in the class of 2013. Unfortunately, things would kind of get messed up as he would get mono his senior year and was downgraded to a four-star recruit. One scout had this to say about why he dropped. Quote, another quarterback who was once a five-star, Shane Morris, fell to four stars, and the bottom line was this. Morris struggles with progressions and throwing across his body, and until those things are corrected, there is no way to justify keeping him as a five-star. Strong arm or not, mononucleosis or not, the quarterback position is scrutinized the most, and Morris did not play up to his status. He apparently had been beat out by some other gunslingers in some of the camps, and Michigan fans were a little bit concerned about him dropping. He was still a big deal, though. According to 24-7 Sports, Shane Morris was a four-star recruit, the number three pro-style quarterback, and the 71st best player in the class of 2013. By the time Morris had got to Michigan, Brady Hoke was the head coach. He would also get a chance right away, as their backup quarterback, Russell Bellamy, would actually tear his ACL before the season, and Morris was named the backup. The actual starter was a guy by the name of Devin Gardner, who you are more than likely familiar with. He was the star, but Morris was the backup. The Wolverines began the year ranked number 17 in the country, and they would start out with a game over Central Michigan. Since they were up so much, Morris actually got a chance to go into the game, where he went 4 of 6 for 59 yards and a pick. He wouldn't play again until November, as he would complete one pass against Michigan State for 6 yards. The Wolverines got out to a 5-0 start, but they lost that crazy game against Christian Hackenberg and Penn State in 4 overtimes, and then after they went over Indiana, they were still 6-1 and number 23 in the country. 
They'd play against number 24 Michigan State, and in one of the biggest games in that rivalry's existence, they got beat 29-6. They'd be a major letdown the following week as they lost at home to Nebraska, and besides a win over Northwestern in triple overtime, they finished the year with losses to Iowa and Ohio State, where Hoke famously went for two. Because of that, the Wolverines would go to the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, where they would lose 31-14 against Kansas State, and in that game, Morris would actually throw for 196 yards and a pick. On the year, he didn't have a single touchdown and two interceptions as he appeared in three games. In 2014, he was once again the backup to Gardner and would appear in four total games. Against App State, he would throw an interception. Against Utah, he would throw an interception. And against Minnesota, he would throw an interception. So far in his career, he had five interceptions and not a single touchdown to his name. And this was very concerning. Michigan, on the other hand, would struggle that year. They would beat Appalachian State, Miami of Ohio, Penn State, Indiana, and Northwestern, but they would lose seven games, and the Wolverines would go 5-7, and seven, and this would be the last year of Brady Hoke. He was fired, and now they had a new guy coming in. It was the Michigan man, Jim Harbaugh. He was expected to turn things around immediately, and the 2015 season was actually a lot of fun. Going into the 2015 season, there was an interesting quarterback battle. You had Iowa transfer Jake Rudock, and then you had Wilton Spade. For a little while, it looked like Morris was going to be the backup quarterback, but Harbaugh did not want to burn his red shirt unless it was for meaningful snaps. During the following weeks, Morris and Spate would battle it out in practice, and when Rudock would get hurt against Minnesota, Harbaugh had put Spate into the game, signaling that he had won that backup job. Because of that, obviously Morris redshirted in 2015, and he was falling behind the eight ball. The Wolverines, on the other hand, had a pretty weird year. They thrashed number 22 BYU and number 13 Northwestern at home. They lost that Michigan State game by the messed up punt. They beat Minnesota because of a goal line stand. They scored on fourth and goal and held off Indiana in double overtime, and then finished the regular season by getting slapped around by Ohio State. They still ended up going 9-3, and, and they were selected to play in the Citrus Bowl, where they killed number 19, Florida. Going into 2016, Rudock was gone, and there was going to be a big quarterback battle between Wilton Spate, Shane Morris, Houston transfer John O'Corn, highly recruited quarterback Brandon Peters, and former four-star Alex Malzone. Morris would not get a chance to play a whole lot in their spring game, and apparently in that game, he lined up at wide receiver where he threw an interception. Spate was named the starter, and Morris would appear in three games, completing four of five passes for 45 yards. The Wolverines had a spectacular year, as they started out 9-0 before a road loss to Iowa, and then they eventually lost in double overtime to Ohio State, and you had the controversial JT Barrett first down, and the eventual Curtis Samuel touchdown. I actually made a documentary on this season, so be sure to check out that video if you get a chance. Because of that, they went 10-2 and, and would play against number 10 Florida State in the Orange Bowl, where the Seminoles would go on a game-winning drive and beat the Wolverines 33-32. To this point, Morris had never thrown a touchdown, and his time as a Michigan quarterback was coming to an end, so he decided he was going to do something else. Morris would enter the transfer portal and decide to go to a school in-state, and just so happened to be the first team he ever played against, Central Michigan. When he became a Chippewa, he immediately won the starting job, and he got a chance to finish his career on a high note. He threw his first touchdown pass and a win over Rhode Island, and then a road win over Kansas. He actually threw for five touchdowns in 467 yards, which showed he had the talent. He would also have a four touchdown performance and a win over Ball State, and he actually led Central Michigan to a pretty good year. The team went eight and four in the regular season and would go to the Idaho Potato Bowl. He did what he was most known for. He threw interceptions. He finished that game against the Cowboys 29 of 39 for 329 yards with one touchdown and four interceptions. He finished his senior year with the Central Michigan program with 3,237 yards, 27 touchdowns, and a pretty high 17 interceptions. He also had three touchdowns on the ground. And the once generational arm coming out of the state of Michigan would end up finishing his career in the state of Michigan, just not at the school everyone expected it to be. From there, he never did anything in the professional football realm, except he did play for the Baltimore Brigade of the Arena Football League. Not much happened for Shane Morris in his football career, and the once pegged savior did not live up to the hype. So you may be asking, what went wrong for Shane Morris? Well, I think it was a couple of things. A, he seemed to be pretty overrated coming out of high school, as his stat lines were never that great. Having Mono his senior year definitely did not help, as that weakened his body, and he missed out on some valuable experience. He was pegged to have a great arm, but as a lot of those scouts said, he needed to fix a lot of his mechanics and his decision making. Because of that, it led to him throwing a ton of interceptions, and he could never be consistent throwing the ball. Combine the Mono stuff with those issues he needed to fix, he was automatically behind when he got into Michigan, 
And at a school like that, they're always bringing in talented quarterbacks who are going to push you. He never really got an opportunity to show what he had, but at the same time, he did have that chance in practice and the other guys were just better. He was stuck in a log jam of talented quarterbacks and could just never prove himself. He did eventually leave to lower competition where he showed he had the talent, but it was a little bit too late. He never fixed his major problem, which was interceptions. Ultimately, the big time prodigy out of the state of Michigan never got to fulfill his dream of saving the Michigan program and winning a national title. And in fact, he never even threw a touchdown pass for the Wolverines. But the overall moral of the story is, he was the classic case of a player with, with all the potential in the world, but they just couldn't put it all together. I hope you enjoyed today's video about Shane Morris, and if there's another player you'd like me to take a look at next, be sure to let me know down in the comment section. And also don't forget to hit that like button and give me your thoughts, as it really helps with the algorithm. Also be sure to subscribe before you go, and check out all my other videos on the end screen including my video about the 2016 Michigan Wolverines and how they threw away their playoff chances. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.